Collider Crash Course is taking a stroll down memory lane and running through the history of the Cape Crusader on the big screen. I'm Batman. 2003 saw Warner Brothers hire Memento and Insomnia director Christopher Nolan to helm a Batman movie based off of David S. Goyer's story called Batman Begins. Their mission, make Batman darker and more realistic. The film geared up for production in the United Kingdom and Chicago, which doubled as Gotham City. Christian Bale, who was approached for Batman in Darren Aronofsky's failed Batman Year One, signed on as Bruce Wayne, with Liam Neeson, Killian Murphy, Katie Holmes, Michael Caine, and Gary Oldman rounding out the stellar cast. The film offered the definitive origin story of Bruce Wayne, with the movie showing us the death of Bruce's parents, leading to his decision to leave Gotham and begin training under Ra's al Ghul's League of Shadows. Batman Begins opened in theaters on June 15, 2005 and was both a critical and financial hit. It grossed upwards of $48 million in its opening weekend, eventually making over $372 million worldwide. The film received 85% overall approval rating on Rotten Tomatoes, even with its dark tone being compared to the previous Batman films. The film was nominated for the Best Cinematography Academy Award and for three BAFTA awards. Batman was back, and in a big way, paving the way to arguably the greatest Batman movie of all time, The Dark Knight. Christopher Nolan came back on board to develop the sequel alongside his brother, Jonathan Nolan. The Dark Knight included the main cast from Batman Begins, minus Katie Holmes, who opted out to pursue other projects. <laughs> she was replaced by Maggie Gyllenhaal. Aaron Eckhart also joined the ensemble in the role of Harvey Dent Two-Face. And in a stroke of genius casting, unbeknownst at the time to the crybaby guardians of the internet, Heath Ledger, known then for Brokeback Mountain, came on board to play the Joker. Principal photography began in April 2007 in Chicago and concluded in November of that year. As the viral marketing campaign kicked into gear in January of 2008, the untimely passing of Ledger forced Warner Brothers to rethink their strategy by focusing more on Batman and the action in the movie and less on Ledger's noticeably chilling portrayal of the Joker. In the end, fans of the franchise got what they wanted and The Dark Knight shattered opening weekend projections on July 18, 2008, scoring over $158 million at the domestic box office opening weekend the biggest in history at the time. It went on to earn $534.9 million in North America and a grand total of a billion dollars worldwide, the fourth film in history to gross more than $1 billion. Critics also loved the movie, especially Heath Ledger's haunting performance as the Joker. He was posthumously awarded the Best Supporting Actor Oscar the following year. The Dark Knight is also often credited as being the movie that inspired the Academy to change the five-picture nominee system to a 10-nominee system. Pre-production immediately began on the follow-up film with Nolan, his brother Jonathan, and David Goyer back to pen the script. The filmmakers were intent on completing the trilogy in a satisfying way that wouldn't feel redundant. Tom Hardy was cast as Bane, and Anne Hathaway came on board as Selina Kyle, aka Catwoman. Joseph Gordon-Levitt was also cast as John Blake, and Marion Cotillard rounded out the cast as Miranda Tate, also known as Talia al Ghul. The final chapter in Nolan's Batman trilogy hit theaters on July 20th, 2012, earning $75.8 million on opening day in the U.S. and grossing $160.9 million its debut weekend, the third highest opening weekend of all time behind The Avengers and Harry Potter and The Deathly Hallows Part II. It wound out outgrossing its predecessor to become the 10th highest grossing film of all time with a little over a billion dollars in box office receipts. Fans may not have loved the movie like The Dark Knight, but The Dark Knight Rises was loved, and thus, a clamoring for more. More, more Batman and Nolan rang out across the universe. DC was already mounting its shared universe with its debut entry, Man of Steel, and rumors besieged the production, with many of the guardians of the internet, wise in their knowledge, proclaiming a post credit scene would be included in Man of Steel with a bat signal catching Superman's attention, which in turn would reveal Bale's Batman back in the cowl and part of the universe again. Nope, 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 said the true internet gods. 
And at 2013 San Diego Comic-Con, director Zack Snyder revealed a Batman Superman logo, confirming a new Batman would appear in the movie, citing it would be inspired by Frank Miller's seminal graphic novel, The Dark Knight Returns. In August of 2013, the internet collapsed on itself when Ben Affleck was announced as the new Batman, and in early 2014, it had to go into timeout when Jesse Eisenberg was cast as Lex Luthor. Ben Affleck was said to have sent Eisenberg a muffin basket with a note saying, it will get better. Gal Gadot was also added to the movie as Wonder Woman with Jeremy Irons rounding out the sort of, but not really sequel to Man of Steel as Bruce Wayne's stalwart friend and servant, Alfred. Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice, the 10th film to feature the Batman, debuted in March of 2016 to a critical drubbing not seen since the Schumacher days. Though some fans enjoyed the movie, it was dubbed disappointing by many critics and didn't quite launch the shared universe like Warner Brothers had hoped. It opened with $166 million during its first weekend in the U.S., which put it ahead of The Dark Knight Rises, but the movie then dropped a historic 81% in its second weekend of release. But guess what? Batman, that's what. Contrary to the internet's first reaction to Ben Affleck's casting, his portrayal of the iconic character was one of the most widely praised aspects of the film. Fans dug his vicious take on The Dark Knight, and they wanted more. And more they shall get! Ben Affleck's Batman next appeared in Suicide Squad, and now we're currently awaiting Batman's 12th appearance on screen with the November 2017 release of Justice League, with Batman heading up the team. Now we know Will Arnett is playing the Lego Batman. We're talking about the live action Batman. So while we wait to see how Justice League does with fans and critics, there's still a lot of problems happening with Batman's first standalone in the new DCEU. We recently learned that Ben Affleck has dropped out of directing, but will still star in and produce the film with the script he wrote with DC Godfather Jeff Johns, featuring one of Batman's arch nemesis, Joe Manganiello as Deathstroke. Sad Affleck lives on. Well, I guess I have a lot of free time now. Guess I'll watch more Crash Course. Check that out over there, that's part one. Check out The Accountant, it's an underrated movie.